An interview with Kirk Skopak from The Point. He's the drummer. Today on Coffee with Conrad. Winning. What's up, everybody? It's Conrad from ConradRocks.net. You're listening to Coffee with Conrad. It's uh, Today's April 28th, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2014. They changed the calendar for my Lord. And anyway, man, I have so much stuff going on. Um, it's this Jesus Jam blur. People ask me, what'd you do yesterday? I'm like, well, I don't know. It has something to do with Jesus Jam. I don't remember. It's all just kind of like coming together. <laughs> I mean, it's just like blurring together. Anyway, so the weather's turning around. Um, that's cool. Finally, we're gonna, I, I guess Jesus Jam is going to be warm. It's Memorial Day, May 26th, Land Passes, Texas. Um, we've been praying about doing some things. We, we've been wanting to unify the body of Christ um, through social media. That's something God's put on our heart. And, you know, there's been a few words like the Chuck Pierce uh, prophetic word about the honeycomb and stuff like that. And, you know, we're probably going to start doing some free social media classes. We were talking to John at John's Java House. So, like, dude, how about, you know, you let us do a social media class for, you know, one drink minimum. So, you know, he gets a drink, you know, for offering his place and he has some free Wi-Fi. And you can learn your social media. So we're probably, we're, we're thinking about doing that. If you're interested, <laughs> you'd have to contact me via social media. That's kind of funny. You can email me, Conrad, at ConradRocks.net. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Most Radical Man. Um, if you're listening to this, you know, uh, you know you're know you probably into social media already. But we're going to start doing that. If, if, if you have some friends that just like want Facebook 101, which everybody's got Facebook, you know, and we got Twitter. Uh, we're just kind of putting the feelers out there right now for your social media. How can we help? You know, we just want to unify the body of Christ. You know, it's pretty powerful. I keep alluding to that story where the pastor was in Costco. I know I keep talking about it, but this is for the new listeners. Um, remember when fiction was on the Bible in Costco? And he couldn't get help from the guy in the aisle. And then he couldn't get help from the managers. Like, you know, the Bible's not fiction, dude. What's up? So what he does is he takes a picture of the word fiction <clears throat> on the Bible. And he tweets it from inside the store. Bam. 24 hours later, all the fiction labels are ripped off. There's a letter of apology. Because there's power in social media. And can you just imagine if everybody, if everybody hooks up. Uh, in social media, we all exchange our Twitter information, our Facebook information. And let's just say, look, I'm going to go to the movie. I'm going to go see God's Not Dead. Who wants to go? Bam, it's on Facebook. All of a sudden, there's I did that, you know, like 20 minutes before the movie, and seven of our friends showed up. Um, anyway, so there's power in social media there. So we're going to probably be doing that. If you're interested or you know somebody that might be interested, go ahead and, you know, just, just let me know somehow. What else am I going to talk about today? Oh, yeah, we went to an, uh, an event with uh, Ryan, uh, Renegade Redeemed, and Mrs. Jamie at the, um, let's see, what's, what was it called? Harker Heights Community Church was putting on Praise in the Park. And that was pretty awesome, uh, you know, lots of lots of Jesus loving people, and it was raining a little bit, but I still got some really good pictures. If you check out my social media stream, you will see some of them. I tweet them out from time to time. I'm doing some black and white stuff. Yes, I have a new toy. I'm playing, you know, I love playing with the pictures. Um, so that was pretty cool. Also, you know, I got to tell you, this whole I know I'm talking about Jesus Jam all the time, but dude, God is in this thing. We've been we've been praying about it, and there's all this just mind blowing 
coincidences. They're God incidences. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'm just going to leave it at that because I want to get to the interview with uh, Kirk Skopak from, he's the drummer from The Point. Really good stuff. You know what? I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the uh, the point promo. I love this promo video. And then after that, we're probably going to do the. Um, I'll play the interview for you. Yeah, actually, this is going to be my third interview with uh, people from the point I interviewed. Bill Negron um, and Ashley, of course, excellent interviews. And then we have, now we have Kirk. And if you, man, if you listen to that, um, that promo, it's tasteful drumming. It really is. So a very talented worship team. So um, after this, we're going to play the interview. I'm so excited for Jesus Jam. I mean, I really, really am. First of all, just just everyone coming together and just that worship and being in a park for some reason, it's just, I feel like it's just going to be awesome. And um, my husband, before I found out about Jesus Jam, was just wanting to volunteer with the Wounded Warriors. So, I mean, this was just perfect, just perfect timing. And I know God is just going to show up and show out. Hi, this is John from John Shaba House having coffee with Conrad. Amen. I like it. That was great. Conrad Rocks is supported by its listeners and by its blog readers. That means people just like you. You can support Conrad Rocks by PayPal or by credit card. You'll find the contribution widget conveniently located in the sidebar of conradrocks.net. If this ministry has touched your life, please prayerfully consider an offering. And remember, Jesus, Jesus rules. All right, no more messing around. Here's the interview. <laughs> And this is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. You're listening to Coffee with Conrad, and I am on the phone. I'm on Skype phone with Kirk from the Point Christian Fellowship in Temple, Texas. How's it going, man? It's going good. <laughs> Real good. <laughs> good. We are excited to have the Point at uh, Jesus Jam. You guys rock out. I mean, it's just, I was listening to your drums. I, I don't know if you heard my promo, but dude, you've got some chops. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> well, that, now just so you know, that's coming from a musician. I'm a musician too. I play guitar, so. Well, I, I take that with much respect. Then. <laughs> Amen. What we're doing here is I'm getting testimonies for Jesus Jam um, um, from the musicians, from whoever wants to, whoever's behind the scenes. I did one with Jesus Jam, Jason, which is the sound guy, you know, and yeah. I did one with Bill. Um, I did one with Ashley, which was excellent. 
Now it's your turn. So do you do you have a testimony <laughs> you want to share with us? Dude, my whole life is a testimony. <laughs> let, let us have it, man. You know, I I uh I grew up in the radio industry. My dad ran radio stations uh in Arizona. Well, a radio station in Arizona and then one in New Mexico and Colorado. So I I was I've been immersed with music since since as young as I can remember. Um I I can remember spinning vinyls on my little record player when I was four years old and uh, I've, I've been surrounded by music my entire life. And I know now that, you know, God put a talent in me before I was born. He had a plan for it, but he gave me this talent. And I think immediately the enemy came to try to steal it. Um, and, and I, and I say that because of the, the, the venues that were, were placed in, in front of me, the, 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 the life that we had throughout my life. I've, I've had, I guess you would say pitfalls. I mean, I grew up in a church. We, you know, my family was a uh, Lutheran Missouri Synod, and of course, it was very strict and very uh, uh, regimented and very religious. And about the time that we uh, moved to Colorado, um, there was something in me at that point in time that said, you know, this isn't right. And what wasn't right about it was, is it felt like it was a funeral service. I, I mean, I was going to church, and you know, I, I remember being ten or eleven years old and looking at my mom and saying, you know, mom this shouldn't be a funeral service. This, this should be fun. <laughs> you know, I, we should be enjoying going to church on Sundays and I, I don't like it. And about that time we got into a, a congregational church. We moved into a Baptist church and I was becoming a teenager and my dad was still staying in the Lutheran church and my parents got divorced and here comes the rest of the turmoil. <laughs> All right. And about the time, uh, we, my, well, a few years before my parents got divorced, I started playing drums um, in middle school in, in eighth grade. And I had signed up to be a saxophone player. And as the Lord would have it, that was not what I was supposed to do. <laughs> um, we had too many saxophone players. And so I was signed up to play the drums. Um, my band director told me that's what I was going to do. And I said, okay. And I didn't have a desire to play the drums. I wanted to play sax. You know, and uh, I know that that was that was a divine thing there too. Um, I I, uh, I started off in beginning band in, in eighth grade, and uh, the first semester and then the second semester I was in wind ensemble, and then I get to high school and my freshman year I'm, I'm second chair and playing on the snare line, and um, my directors were just flabbergasted with the things that I was doing. And there was obviously a talent that God had put in there for me. Um, and I know he meant to, to advance the kingdom and through the, my parents' divorce and trying to deal with that as a kid, I really took a wrong turn. And I spent probably a better part of the next six years of my life trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing and what my purpose was. And I'm telling you, I looked in every wrong place I possibly could. I'm I'm a walking testimony of stuff that you can be pulled out of. If anybody had any idea what God has done for me and the kind of garbage that he pulled me out of, all through my life, even through all of my bad decisions, he, there would always be these defining moments when he would look at me or I would hear him say, I'm still here. I'm still waiting. And there would be this, this, this bright point where I would see something or he would bring a revelation and the garbage that I was doing. And from the time I was 15 till the time I was, let's say 22, they were some real bad years. When I was 22, lived in Oshkosh, Nebraska, and there's a bunch of other garbage in between there, but I was in Oshkosh, Nebraska, which is nowhere, um, in an apartment with a mattress on my floor. I didn't have a car to drive. I had a lawn chair in my living room and a console TV. (laughs) I I had nothing. (laughs) Um, I had a job. And I used to walk to a payphone to call my parents and say hi to them. I'd have to call them collect. And my mom had sent me a uh, invitation to go to Promise Keepers that summer in Boulder, Colorado. And I got it for my birthday. My birthday was in April, and I had called her in June just by chance. And she said, hey, are you going to Promise Keepers? And I said, uh, having completely forgot about it, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, 
had no intention of it. She said, well, good, because it's next week. And I, I've kind of puckered up a little bit, and we got off the phone and went looked at the, the ticket, and sure enough, it was the next week. And I hadn't quite hit the bottom yet. I, st- I still had my pickup truck at this time. <laughs> so I drove down to Boulder, Colorado, and, and met up with a bunch of folks from the Baptist church that we were going to in, uh, from Craig. And um, I stayed in the camper with them. And we got to the Friday night deal. And I had been, uh, if I can be real, <laughs> by all means, I've been been drinking, been smoking, been carousing, uh, had uh, been chasing girls at that time. I mean, I was everything I was not supposed to do. I was doing, and I left Oshkosh and went to Boulder, and I got to this thing on a Friday night, and I am immediately immersed in an area where there is none of that. So the antithesis of what my life had been was right there in front of me, and it was a good thing. Um, and I, I really struggled that Friday night. I, I, uh, I had an awakening that night. Um, I couldn't smoke because nobody knew I was smoking at the time, and I couldn't go drink because <laughs> you didn't do that there, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, a couple of the men that were from the church that had really kind of saw me through my high school years were there, um, and I, I, I broke down that night. And then we went all day Saturday. I remember Chuck Swindoll come riding in on a Harley and a bunch of praise and worship going on. And I'm thinking, you know, this this is what it's supposed to be. And it was a turning point for me. Um, I hit rock bottom a few months after that. Um, and I walked into a Church of Christ in Oshkosh, Nebraska, and met a pastor named Craig Embry um, and talked with him. And him and I began meeting quite a bit. I would meet him on Tuesday nights and we had church on Wednesday nights and then I was there on Sunday too. So, um, I was, I was getting immersed in some things and it took me getting to that rock bottom place to actually kind of decide to change something. You're at your bottom when Jesus shows up. I mean, <laughs> yes, yeah, and he yeah. did in full force. You know, I, I t- I had never been so broke or so alone or so scared at, at a point and then been so happy. I I liked going to the payphone and calling my parents. It was a joy to do that because I was able to do it, you know. Um, I I liked that. I didn't have a problem, you know. You, it's funny you you <laughs> you go through these things and we have all of this stuff around us and we've got all of these possessions and things. And in some of the most joyous points in my life, I had nothing. This was one of those those times. I mean, I had nothing in my life except this man that God sent me to or him to me, you know, in this experience that I had with him in Boulder, Colorado in Christ. I mean, that's all I had. And, um, we, I was baptized for the third time in my life. I was baptized as an infant. I got baptized again in high school, but this time I got baptized for real. And it was me and Craig in the church on a Thursday night, just the two of us in a horse trough. I was baptized in a horse trough. Amen. And I remember him dunking me down and feeling the change, physically feeling a change in my body and coming back up a complete new creation. And I didn't ever want to look back. Now I stumbled a little bit on the way. I, I could give you a list of stuff that he brought me through. I mean, addictions, poverty, uh, uh, anger, uh, perversion. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there, you know, and to be where I am today with the wife that I have and the children that I have and the job that I have and this church body that we're a part of, I never would have thought in a million years that I'd done something like this ever. I, I grew up saying that I was never getting married and I was never having kids. And I also said I was never coming to Texas. <laughs> yeah, that's and funny. I moved to Texas. All my kids were born in Texas. <laughs> my wife is from Texas. And the the best church body I have ever been a part of ever is here in Texas. Um, and we've, we've got a couple of pastors that I've seen do things for, for me and my family and for other people. That, that I've never seen in my entire life. These these people sacrifice. And they, you know, Ricky had sent me a, we'd been talking one night and he told me, he said, uh, 
forget how he said it, but it was uh, either he was sent to us or we were sent to him, where they had been waiting for, for us to show up. You know, it was a God-appointed thing, and I don't doubt that in any shape, form, or fashion. And and I don't doubt the fact that uh, this worship team was put together for a reason too. Um, how did that? How did you get involved with that worship team? I mean, how did you get into the point and everything? We uh, it's about five years ago or so. We were all part of another church, a, a big group of us, and there was kind of a mass exodus. We had, uh, a big group of us had left and and moved and. Um, you know, and I had talked to the pastor of the other church about it, and, and he had given me a blessing on it. And, 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 you know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, we weren't, my family wasn't leaving on, you know, without the blessing to go. And he gave it to me. You know, I told him what was going on, and he said, you know, I understand, and I think you're right, and, and you have my blessing. And so we had, uh, there was a big group of us that ended up coming over to this church, and the majority of us were worshipers. Um, Guitar players, a couple of us, a couple of bass players, uh, singers, uh, a couple of lead singers. I mean, it was a bunch. Um, and over the years, um, I mean, we, we got planted in there. And over the years, it's, I guess it's, for, for lack of a better term, it's been pruned. Um, and not to say that nobody else was meant to do that because they are, but I, I think that he had a plan. Um, and some of us, uh, have been around each other for nearly a decade. <laughs> right. Um, we formed a bond there that's, that's been really good. You know, Carlos and I have been around each other for probably 10 years now. Um, known Ashley and, and them for, for 10 years now. Um, and the rest of them, uh, that we're with, uh, has been over the last five years. It's a blessing, man. Let me ask you a couple of things. I, I was taking some notes while you were talking because I didn't want to interrupt. You you <laughs> grew up you grew up in the Lutheran Church, so you grew up in the church. And one of the things that you said that was interesting is when you were backslide backslidden, you were still mm-hmm. here. You were still hearing from God. Oh yeah, yeah. But you you partied anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, I kept running. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot. I hear that story a lot, and you know, I, and I wanted to talk about something else because I think some people can learn from your testimony. There's a scripture going through my head. You said that you were in this party environment, and then you went to the Promise Keepers, and then yep. all of a sudden that environment wasn't there, yep. right? I mean, you know, hey, I can't party because no, there's nothing around, and there's the people don't do it here, and that type of thing. And then exactly. you met, and then God sent you this man, and I, and I was kept thinking of Second Timothy two twenty four. You know, uh, Paul begot I begot Timothy in my chains, that type of thing. And he's in Second Timothy two twenty four. He says, "The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient." And then here's where here's what I was ringing through my spirit while you were talking. In meekness, instructing yeah. those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. And I was thinking, man, this fits. This God <laughs> sent you this man, put you in a different environment, and that guy helped you recover yourself. Yeah. Yeah, It's it was, uh, he did. <laughs> You know, he, he, the Lord brought me to a place where I had no place else to go because I kept running from him and he, and he sent this man and, and actually the, Craig had come to Oshkosh probably not six months before I came to him from Denver. It was a satellite church from a group out of, uh, I think it was Inglewood, Colorado. And he had just been sent there six months prior before I showed up at his doorstep. And it was a divine appointment. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's how God works. It is. And, and, and that's the cool thing. You know, God has put men in my life to lead me and direct me all of my life. You know, my dad and I've got a real good relationship now, but it wasn't always that way. You know, I, I uh, alcoholism ran rampant in my family. Um, and, uh, and, and, and my father was part of that, you know, he's been sober for decades now, but, you know, as, as a young kid, um, you know, you 
he wasn't there a lot, <laughs> you know? Um, and through a divorce and him being remarried and stuff, um, those are difficult times. And the Lord put these awesome men of God in my path to keep directing me, honestly, I think, to keep from killing myself. Because had I keep going on that path, I'd have been dead. You were um, you were opposing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And Kirk, you know, I I think my listeners, one of the things that I mean, there's there's some key points in your testimony that, um, you know, God will meet you at your lowest point. He'll meet you when you're eating corn husks with pigs, right? Yep. <laughs> and yes, there, sure. There's this point. There's this point where you change your mind. Repentance start, you know, you, you're changing your mind. You're like, you know what? I'm going back to dad. And, you know, you may fall several times. He's waiting for you. He's ready to put the robe on and the ring and all that. And a couple of other things. Yes. It, the, the environment, you know, you, you found someone to disciple you. That was a God thing. So for yeah. those of you, for those of you that are struggling with something, you want to repent, you know, hook up with somebody that... Yes more than likely has been through that with you. Uh, I mean, through, through that similar experience, like you don't, you don't seek relationship advice from a single man. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <Nope>. So. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, you, you change your environment. Uh, did, did you, did you, did you stay there? I mean, where the, like you were in this one environment and you moved or something. I, I wasn't quite sure how that worked out. You know, it's a miracle, man. I'm in Oshkosh, Nebraska. I hit bare bottom. I got into the church. I'm seeing Craig. I'm praying. All of this stuff. You know, I'd been begging my dad for months. Say, Dad, let me come home. Dad, let me come home. And he's like, No, you got to figure this out. <laughs> Which was probably it was the best thing he could have done for me. You know, instead of yanking me out of there. And finally, when I got to the point where I was like, Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. I called him up a few weeks later. I'd been baptized. All of this other stuff had happened. I'm at peace. I've got joy in my heart. I didn't care if I had anything or not. I call my dad up and I'm sitting there talking to him. And he says, son, how you doing? I said, dad, I'm doing great. And he says, really? And I said, yeah. I said, uh, I said, I'm doing good. And I said, uh, told him what was going on and everything. And he said, well, I tell you what, he said, I want you to go in tomorrow and put your two week notice in. I said, I want you to come home and I want you to go back to college. I'm going to pay for your school. You can live here. All you got to do is get good grades. And I, I thought I was going to drop the phone. You know, I once the, the father sent my father back to me. Amen. And that that brings tears to my eyes. Even right now, telling you, I love my dad. Um, and uh, it was awesome. You know, um, we had uh, had some conflicts when I got back to to his place later on down. You know, I mean, I was pretty on fire and. I got to tell you, there was some stuff came out of him that uh, his theology didn't agree with. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and 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 men were fighting words in his house. <laughs> right. And uh, you know that that created some conflict. And I ended up, I got to Texas because I was going to go to Abilene Christian University. Um, I was accepted there, um, and uh, was going to go to the School of Ministry and Preaching and Music because I knew that's what I wanted to do. I, you know. I want to worship. I want to worship till I die. I, I, I want to play drums and worship and go to war musically till the day I die. And, and spiritually and prayer, prayerfully too. But uh, I came to Abilene Christian. I went to Abilene and uh, I had a grant set up and everything. Everything was going perfect. Uh, apartment job. Uh, had a girlfriend and... Um, you know, I wasn't supposed to have a girlfriend, and I went to go sign up for classes, and my state grant fell through. So here I am again, <laughs> uh, you know, hitting the, hitting the bottom again, you know. But that's how I got to Texas was to, to study ministry and preaching and, and music. Amen. Let me let me ask you something else, too, because you have yeah. this strong musical thing in your background. Was there ever mm -hmm. a point where playing secular music got was a thorn? Actually, Here's here's the cool thing, and I am so thankful for this. <laughs> I, we we have an awesome God. I, I have never played secular music. What? Never. This is crazy. My music, not my music, the the music talent that I was given, I was taught by some amazing instructors, eighth grade all the way through high school. 
I get out of high school. I go to University of Northern Colorado to study music because I was a music major there. That was the first college I went to. You never drummed in a bar or anything? Never. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to college. I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to be a studio musician. Is what I wanted to do. And my my high school senior plan was, I was going to be a rock star. That I mean, hair bands were big. <laughs> I yeah. was going to be big, and that was all that was to it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. And I got to college and found out that I wasn't as big as what I thought I was. Um, and I fell flat on my face, and I was really living wrong in college, and. God said, I'm not going to let you do that. I spent one semester at college and I didn't play drums from the time I was 18 years old in college until I started playing again at a church here in Temple, Texas back in 1999, eight years. Yeah, I mean, with, with music, that your love for music, that can be a secular hook in your jaw and just drag you down to hell. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it happen. I went to Hollywood, man. I saw wholesome kids from Nebraska leave with tracks on their arms. I mean, you know, the devil's yep. in the music industry, man. So he, God, exactly. kept, God kept you out of that. Exactly. That's exactly where I was headed, and he wasn't going to have it. <laughs> and, and, and then once I started living my life the way he wanted me to live it, you know, He's given this gift that when we're doing worship, I mean, I, I can't tell you the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions and the, the power that's in it. I mean, I'm not a great drummer. You know, I mean, there's guys out there that are a hundred times better than I am, but I've got a heart to worship him as much as I possibly can. He is, he has given back to me a hundredfold of what I ever could imagine ever playing secularly in this little church in Temple, Texas. Amen. That was awesome. I appreciate it, man. That was awesome. Thank you for being a part of uh, Jesus Jam. We look forward. I'm excited, man. I tell you what, I'm looking forward to this. We are too. You know, it's like you guys have caught the caught the vision over there. Ashley's all gung ho. She's sending me pictures, and you need to talk to the. You need to talk to Kirk. You need to talk to to Bill. <laughs> you know, it's like wow, this is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you I'm, guys. I'm we're looking for revival, man. You know, one of the things here in in Fort Hood. You remember that Compass meeting? Because I were you were you drumming at that Compass meeting? Uh, yes, with, sir. I surely was. Yeah, there was this there's this map on the wall, and Robin she has this uh, heart for that 50 mile radius, and right there in the middle, if you look at the map, it's act. I, I looked at it. It's actually dirty. <laughs> and it's like dirt, right? And that's Fort Hood. And and when people think of um, Fort Hood, the first thing they think of is shootings. Right. You know. So we want you know. There's like a, a spiritual problem in this area, and we're just we're praying for revival. And we don't, you know, we want when people think of Fort Hood in ten years, they think of revival. You know, in this yep. area, not you know in. And Annette said, hey, Annette hey. said at a at a at the the lamp pass is a glow because Susan and I remember this. She goes, "Well, lamp passes is going to be the epicenter of this thing of revival." I know? remember that. <laughs> so all we're doing is we're just like, yeah, we're hello. She spoke it for us, so we're just kind of walking that out. <laughs> yep. Amen. And I, I believe it, man. There is a spiritual. There is a battle going on over this region. You know, you look at. You look at the issues in families, the issues that are happening in workplaces, the, the things that people are dealing with. There, there is a battle going on here, and I can't believe that that's not happening for a reason. The enemy's ticked off, yeah. You know, and and I, I know something good's coming. Hey Amen. Something is good coming. Come and keep praying, man. You know, one of the things there is some spiritual warfare going on. I mean, behind the scenes, there's things happening, and we're rolling with the punches of the devil. We need to be proactive in our prayer and take some territory, man. I'm Amen. telling you, <laughs> we're making the devil mad. Anyway, Kirk, thank you very much for taking the time to to give me your testimony. We look forward to, to you uh, ministering at Jesus Jam, Texas, in Lampasas Memorial Day. Thank you. God bless you, man. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, brother.